Call to order the uh, Tuesday, September 19th, uh, 2017, Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. Uh, the agenda was posted on the 18th of September at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. Roll call. Yeah, how many do we have today? 24? 25. Everyone's here? Mm -hmm. oh. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. There are 25 supervisors present. Thank you. Of the August 15th, 2017 journal. Supervisor Winkle. Motion approved. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or discussion? Okay, please push your I or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by county administrator. To the airport advisory committee, Mindy Smith, David Hippelchowers, Schauser, Lee Kunze, Jane Brill, Brandon Molina, and Charles Sweet. And local emergency planning commission, Starlene Grossman. Supervisor Winkle. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or discussion? Please push your I or nay button. The appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. Uh, we have Aaron Brault and Eric Failhaber from the Conservation Planning and Conservation Department. We're going to give a project update. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, I'm going to Adam asked that I touch on a couple things uh, that have gone on in the department over the last uh, couple of years and a couple things that have been happening recently. So I'm going to start off and then I'm going to hand it over to Eric on our staff here to talk about the uh, second project, the Elkhart Lake Phosphorus Reducing Tile Filter. And that's been a baby of Eric's. Eric uh, does a lot of design in our staff and I know he's very proud of that project and uh, he's been around 40 years or so, so he started when I was two years old, so he's, <laughs> he's been around the block and has seen that and, and been there. Um, so I know he's quite proud of that project, so I'm going to hand it off to him then, and then I'll follow up with the last two. So I think my clicker's working here. So in 2011, I know my committee's aware of this, but I don't know if the rest of the county board is. Um, in 2011, we were awarded, along with the Nature Conservancy, a $1.6 million uh, study to look at phosphorus reduction in two paired watersheds, a paired watershed study. So uh, the test watershed was Otter Creek out by Plymouth, and the control watershed was the Fishers Creek, uh, which is up by Howard's Grove. And the goal was to have see what a, a targeted investment in a, in a test watershed would do in regards to phosphorus and other pollutants entering the waterway. So again, it was a, a great partnership between the Kohler Trust for Preservation, they were the main funder, uh, the county, TNC, uh, obviously landowners in each watershed, uh, the Extension, USGS, NRCS, UW-Madison, and WDNR. And uh, one thing we like to point out is that in the Otter Creek, the test watershed, we, have o we had over 90% landowner participation. So what did we get done? Uh, we installed about 1,450 acres of nutrient management plans, or not installed, we completed um, nutrient management plans on, on a lot of the acreage in that watershed. 
Uh, we did 56 acres of conservation tillage, 19 acres of cover crops, almost a mile of grass waterways, um, some buffers totaling about 6.6 .6 acres, and a whole host of other things. Uh, the thing I'll talk about most tonight is the second from the bottom bullet, which was a um, denitrifying bioreactor. And it sounds like a big fancy word, but essentially it's a bark bed. And what that is, is it's a filter. So a lot of our egg uh, fields are tiled in our county, and so it intercepts the water that would run through a tile, treats it before it ent enters the creek. And that was the first in the state. There's a couple other uh, states around us that have installed them, but we were the first in the state of Wisconsin. So what did all those best management practices uh, ultimately succeed in doing? Uh, about 1,200 pounds of phosphorus uh, was reduced in the watershed, and about a pound of phosphorus can support about 500 pounds of algae. So that's about 600,000 pounds of algae that could have been prevented. Um, again, we installed the, the state's first uh, bioreactor, and through the extension, uh, we had a lot of uh, cover crop research done on a, a couple different fields in that watershed. This is what a bioreactor looks like. Again, it's a, it's a fancy word for a, a big pit in the ground that water flows through, um, and you use hardwood and you can't use hard, or wood that has tannins in it. I don't know the chemistry behind it, but you have to use hardwood and the um, phosphorus or, or the nitrates and nitrites bind to that hardwood and then cleaner water goes out. So we reduced nitrates, we had baseline sampling uh, before we installed it and we saw about a 50% reduction in nitrates flowing into Otter Creek. And nitrates, if you listen to the news, that's what causes the dead zones in, in water bodies. So in the Fox, or, uh, Green Bay and down in the Gulf of Mexico, that's the chemical that causes the dead zones. So now I'll hand it over to Eric quick and he'll talk about um, what we've been doing out at Elkhart Lake recently. I think it has been an exciting project because it's got more than just the typical players. Uh, we've got uh, two very good farmers involved with us. Uh, it started three years ago with the uh, Elkhart Lake uh, Improvement Association, concerned about some discharge out of a large tile line that headed directly into Elkhart Lake. Uh, I think one of the important things with this project that in Aaron alluded to the bark bed that was very successful for nitrates, but it didn't do anything for treating phosphorus. And we're looking at some of these tile systems because we got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of agricultural field tile in this county that drain directly into our waterways. And uh, the approach we're taking with this filter bed is to try to reduce some of that dissolved phosphorus by running it through a different medium other than bark because the bark did fine on the nitrates but it didn't do anything for the phosphorus so this was another attempt to work at that with the lake association in order to get the farmers to agree to put the practice on their tile system one of the things that they pointed out was that well there's a lot of homes along that corner of the lake that don't have uh, that aren't hooked into the sanitary <coughs> sewer system. They still have conventional septic systems and they're probably contributing about as much phosphorus as you think our tile line is. And sure enough, we sent it through the engineers and some of the people smarter than us to get approval. And that's the first thing they said when they looked at the watershed is, what are you doing about the homes along the lake? If they got conventional systems, they're probably contributing more. So the second phase of this project is going to be second phase of this project is going to be work right along the lake and put a very similar system to this uh, agricultural system on an individual septic tank. In other words, you take your effluent out of your normal tank and it goes into another tank with this uh, iron slag medium in which is magnetic as far as uh, locking the phosphorus to it and then it would go back out into the conventional filter. Field. So this is some of the work we just did the last couple weeks. You have to put a liner in because we're working uh, probably eight feet down in the ground there, so you've got groundwater issues that you want to uh, keep out. Now, this uh, iron slag came from Gary, Indiana. There wasn't any slag outfits or iron 
export or, uh, furnaces in Wisconsin that produced the uh, right kind of slag, I guess. Otherwise, I would have got it down to Charter Steel if I could have been <laughs> a lot cheaper than trucking it up from Indiana. But that's just the way, way it worked out. So this is uh, located uh, right on uh, Highway, just uh, east of Highway P on County Highway A, before, uh, between uh, A and Shoreland Road. So if you're out that way, you can take a look at it. We'll be touring it October uh, 12th with the State uh, Technical Committee. There'll be people coming from all over the different counties in the state to take a look at it. There's a lot of interest from Kiwani and Door counties, where in Kiwani County, 30% of their wells have been contaminated through agricultural runoff. and. Uh, is a, is a big target on that. So we're hoping that some of these newer innovative things are something that can get adapted uh, into the future and, and that other counties will adopt it. And uh, I know on October 16th and 17th, it's the OSTA, uh, the Land and Water Association of Wisconsin is going to be hosting their food, land and water conference. So I know the pre some of the Precom members may have seen that. I hope a few of you attend that. It's going to talk about groundwater, surface water, groundwater quantity, quality, land use, a lot of the things that are on a lot of people's agendas right now and concerns. So it's Thank you, Eric. That also was the uh, first project in the state. So people are looking to us as as an example, so I'm proud of that. Moving on, uh, the non-motorized, uh, there's two projects remaining. Uh, some of you have heard, uh, 2018, we're looking at the South Side Utility Corridor. Uh, just if you recall, uh, back in 2011, before the CATC, if you remember that uh, advisory committee, before they disbanded, they approved a list of projects, um, and these two projects were on that list, so we're working down that list. Um, it was approved unanimously by the Common Council in 2013 to move forward. And this is the high tension line. If you recall, back in 2016, I came before you guys and, and uh, presented. It's the high tension uh, corridor line be between the, um, uh, the power plant and, and going out west to County Highway OK. Uh, we have two good corporate partners in Alliant Energy and American Transmission. Alliant is uh, going to give the property over for a buck. Um, and they've been uh, part of the team the entire time. And then uh, in 2021, perhaps 2022, if there's any remaining dollars after the South Side Utility Corridor, we're targeting uh, a project on PP, uh, which would leverage a different project going on in 18 or 19. And on that one too, we've had good partnerships with uh, adjacent property owners, primarily being Kohler Company and the Kohler Art Center with their new project. Um, along PP. So overall summary uh, to date, uh, about 110 miles have gone in through that program, about 14 miles of sidewalk, 60 miles of bike lanes, about 14 miles of path, 22 miles of shoulders. Uh, we've won some awards over the years. We've been nominated a bicycle friendly community twice. Uh, at the time, we were only one of eight entire counties in the U.S. with that distinction. Um, last year, we got an Excellence in Construction Award, and uh, though we didn't apply for the last one, this year the county was awarded a run, runner-friendly designation, and one of the primary reasons why was because of all the, the work we've done in the past uh, few years. Amsterdam Dunes update. Um, last time I spoke to you, um, I can't remember when that was, but I had mentioned that we were going to be submitting our final banking instrument. Um, that was submitted late spring this year. Uh, we got notification from the IRT, which is the uh, internal review team, which means it's the Army Corps, US EPA, and WDNR, that our submittal was complete, so they notified us that our application was complete and that they would be reviewing it now. Um, and we should receive comments um, hopefully by the end of this month or, or sometime in October. Um, we started some of the restoration projects in the non-mitigation portion of that property uh, this summer uh, through the help of the highway department and others. And then uh, most recently we were awarded, I think it was last week we got the notification that we were awarded a $200,000 grant from the U.S. Forestry Service to restore areas of the uh, non-mitigation portion of the property as well. 
Um, so this was the, the last time I presented to you. Uh, we were in that top circle. You can sort of, this is the, uh, the IRT's timeline. You can sort of see that we're slowly moving down. Um, so hopefully by the end of uh, this year, and then uh, end of this year into winter, we'll get our final, uh, the comments back and get our final plan in, addressing those comments, and then hopefully by early spring to mid next year, we'll be able to sell our first credits out at that site. If you recall, they release 10% once we get the final approval before we have any restoration efforts going on in the mitigation portion of the project. So here's the cost breakdown thus far. If you recall, our original outlay was 4.2 million. Uh, we got, you've seen these numbers uh, before. State stewardship, 2.44. The NRD, 1.295. We hear, and I know we've heard this before, but it, that it's moving forward and it, the consent decree is being circulated for signatures at the different federal agencies that have to sign off on that. Then it'll go to a public hearing, and then ultimately the federal judge will sign off. So um, it's, it's slowly but surely making its uh, way through for signatures, we're being told. Uh, we've got about 43, or 42,000 in farm rent. Uh, so our total confirmed reimbursement thus far is 3.7 and some change. Um, we recently got a uh, offer to purchase on a lot. We'll be countering that offer. And uh, if we get about what we're asking, uh, we'll be made whole if that lot uh, comes to fruition, that lot sale comes to fruition. Um, and this is the last slide. This, these are the grants we received thus far uh, for the non-mitigation portion of the property. Again, we just last week or the week before I got the 200,000 from US Forestry Service so any questions okay. you may you need uh, hang on just a second there we go uh, I, I just have a question about Detail book, we had 872,000 in costs and the 872 other funding. And I didn't know if the Amsterdam Dunes in our capital plan, since it's just listed as Amsterdam Dunes, is is the mitigation part or is it does it relate to other? I believe in the capital plan. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe that's just the mitigation portion. The mitigation portion. Yep. And then all of the reimbursements that are coming in for the mitigation? That would be the sale of the credits in the future. Okay, so we're anticipating sales for the, the mitigation bank. Yeah. And do we, do we have any contracts currently? No, we can't. We can't. You, you can't because it's not approved technically yet. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you the going rate per acre is still between that sixty and 70000 mark. So it's very likely we'll have those credits then? And Yep, it'll be a, over time because again, it, there's proving periods as you go along. They release 10% as soon as it's approved of whatever you're approved for. Right now we have, we submitted our application with 59 credits and that's, that's, it, well, we won't get 59 credits, but we shot high hoping that, you know, they, they'd whittle it down to 50 rather than start at 50 and have them whittle it down to 40. What I've learned is it's more of a negotiation than a, a science, so we started at 59, so with the hopes that we'll get 45, 50 at the end of the day. So, so they'll release 10% of whatever that number ends up being, and then as we restore the property, yeah. then they'll release another percentage of credits. And again, that's a negotiation as well. I think we put in our document 15% thereafter, and then the final year 20 or something like that. Um, I think I listed that in the cap plan, what the, the amounts were, the percentages, I should say. So if I, if I understand this right then, the Amsterdam doing in the capital plan is the mitigation portion of the Amsterdam dooms. Reimbursements in that capital plan relate to, to the, the sale of the credits, which which we, we don't know exactly when those yeah. will come in, but we anticipate that. Sale of the credits, and then I would say anything over and above sure. what we earn. From that. 
after this okay. as well. Thank you very yep. much. Supervisor Nelson. Just, one, just out of curiosity, what is the life uh, expected life of those uh, that provide yeah. and then what happens? Yeah, I think the medium, the question, Eric, was what's the lifespan of the medium? And I, I believe it's 10 years, yes, correct? Yeah, it's a minimum of 10 years. Yeah. And what well, we get in the Alcar Lake Association project is that part of their costs are going to be set aside after the 10 years, to have either enough money to continue renting it for the farmer job gens, or if the agreement falls through, they've got the money set aside in their association to close it back up with their farm. Yep. So part of their agreement for us to get involved was, they, and they were going to also budget so much per year to maintain the site for the farm water to clip and things like that. That was part of the buy-in of the kind of improvement association. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, public addresses. First, we have Jeff Powers of Plymouth to talk about manure pit issues. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Powers, um, I'm a resident of the town of Plymouth, I live on Clarity Way, I've been there 14 years, and last year a uh, manure pit was put in across the road of State Highway 67 on the Helmer Farm, and it's caused uh, a lot of issues for me as an average citizen, average taxpayer. Um, I want to talk about maybe you guys have never had complaints about these it's not uh, the odors it's the fumes I'm worried about um, health issues to older people children in our subdivision we live in Emerald Hills there's River Heights and there's uh, another subdivision just north of me um, I want to inform the county board and all the supervisors you know about my concerns because I, I believe laws need to get changed I know the Act Committee and the way it's structured, the DNR, and I've read some rules online. I know uh, we're concerned about phosphorus and the water, but my concern is the air quality, okay? So, um, if you read a definition, you know, everybody thinks, you know, you're talking about odors of manure from livestock, but I'm more concerned about fumes and air quality. A fume, by definition, is a dust or smoke or a gas or a substance given off as a result of a chemical transformation and reaction heating. So manure pit is, is cooking 24, well, let's say during the day the sun is cooking it. It has a crust, but it's still cooking by chemical reaction. So somehow, some way, my house which sits directly across, there's no trees really in front of me between me and manure pit, and several other residents in my subdivision. You know, we, we breathe, okay, a fume has a chemical transformation, but it can be particles. So we're breathing hydrogen sulfide, we're breathing probably bacteria, and I don't like it. And I don't think it's fair that the state of Wisconsin, uh, Sheboygan County, the town of Plymouth, all allow this to go on near residential uh, subdivision that's been there a while. So I think again laws need to be changed but my concern is the health again. My wife has asthma. You know she she has trouble now then over the last year we're going to a pulmonary specialist because of this. Um, there's there's four fumes involved. You know there's hydrogen sulfide, there's methane, there's uh, ammonia and carbon dioxide. So those gases mostly dissipate, but my concern again is hydrogen sulfide. It's so strong it'll make you gag. The, the smell that comes in, and we believe we're, believe we're breathing fumes, it's so strong we have to close up our windows, and not just me and them, it's my neighbors as well. So we're all concerned about this. And you know, the real ultimate thing is, is my property value has been de devalued. And I don't think, Sheboygan County realized it or town of Plymouth 
when the DNR puts in a manure pit, you know, if you go to sell your property and, you know, heaven forbid any one of you guys lives in a rural area next to a piece of farmland, they put this in, your property value is going down according to the real estate people. So um, I think there's got to be some changes, some ordinances, either Sheboygan County or the state or the DNR has to pay attention to. We're all farm friendly. We live in a farm state. So I'm not trying to disrupt anything. I just want to make sure homeowners that are in the area of a manure pit, you know, have some protection. I know I wasn't notified of the manure pit being installed. I know nobody in the, the laws has to notify me, but that's wrong. You know, it's wrong because my wife and I wanted to retire at our house. We wanted to put on a deck, you know, cook outside. You can't do that in most days. And I'm talking about, you know, seven days a week when from about two o'clock to eight o'clock, you know, you cannot be outside, otherwise it'll make you gag. And again, we don't want to breathe that. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So Overall, I want the, the supervisors to be aware that if there's any other pits, you know, we want the public to be involved. We want the laws to change. We want somebody to stand up for the homeowners. I'm not, I'm not trying to do, change anything, but I, I have some concerns, you know, why we didn't have a storage tank as opposed to an open pit. Is the manure pit operating the way it should? Because if I can smell this seven days a week, in my mind, talking to farmers, there should be a crust over this and we shouldn't smell it until it's pumped out. However, I'm getting it, you know, seven days a week. So I want you guys to be aware of this and that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm not the only one complaining about this. I do have some questions I'd like somebody from the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors to answer. I had some questions answered by the Town of Plymouth, but I have some more and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, John. All right, we have Alan Knoll giving an update on the Veterans Memorial. First off, I'd like to thank the County Board again for approving the budget for the Veterans Service Office so that they could purchase flags for the deceased vet veterans on our cemeteries. <clears throat> All of you should have a notice on your desk about a name dedication coming up on October the 14th at the Veterans Memorial at one o'clock in the afternoon. We are gonna be adding 51 new names to the memorial this year and that is actually a new record for us a number of names we're adding this year the memorial is getting to be known and we're really glad that it's, uh, it's coming this way we've changed the lighting out there it took us many years but we are totally led lighting we've cut our consume our consumption of electricity almost by 80 percent by going to led lighting and because of that, we now, if you notice when you go by, we have lights on from dusk to, till dawn. So anytime you go past the memorial now at night, uh, you will see the memorial lit. Uh, the last time I think I gave a report, we have now a web page up on the internet about the Veterans Memorial. On that web page, there is a tab that says find a vet veteran. We have 3,480 names of veterans on our memorial and you can go there and you can find a vet veteran you can see if a veteran you might know or a relative you can find out if their name is on there and if they're not we would encourage you to fill out a application form and uh, surprise them and add them to the memorial again I, I'm telling you about our uh, thing on Saturday, October the 14th, gives you an opportunity to come out and meet the vet veterans that have served from Sheboygan County and uh, thank them for their service. Are there any questions? What's the website now? I'm sorry? What's the name of the website? 
Oh, it's Sheboygan County Vet Veterans Memorial. Oh, yeah, dot com. Okay, thank you. Yes. It's, so, any other questions? Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Alan. Letters, communications, and announcements. First off, I have three resolutions pertaining to redistricting procedures, one from the Town of Hull Board of Supervisors in the County of Portage, the second from uh, Monroe County Board of Supervisors, and then La Crosse County Board of Supervisors. We'll receive those for information. Next, I have a resolution from the Outagamie County Board of Supervisors opposing legislation that would automatically revoke probation of persons charged with crimes. We'll refer that to the law committee. And finally, I have a resolution from the St. Croix County Board of Supervisors opposing portions of proposed legislation dealing with the motor vehicle registration fees. We'll refer that to the Finance Committee. That is all. Thank you. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Thank you. You know, every time Alan Knoll comes to a county board meeting and shares his pride in our Veterans Memorial and talks about the service of veterans and, and just the good work that he and veterans do in this community, I, ju I just want to say thank you, Alan. Uh, Chairman Tom Wagner and I attended the fifth anniversary of the Veterans Court uh, last week, the week before, was it last week? And Alan once again was there and was one of the mentors to the veterans that go through this program. And I know Tom and I both took notice that you're just one of those individuals that steps up time and time again. And we thank you for your service to this community, Alan. Aaron, I want to say thank you to you and Eric as well. When you go through the budget process, it's just a quick reminder to all of us just how many things are going on in Sheboygan County government. And uh, I know, I don't know if it was uh, Chairman Wagner, I think it might have been Chairman Destrudy that said, you know, every board meeting it'd be nice to hear from a different department head and for a while we were pretty good about doing that and then we've ebbed and flowed a little bit. But what a nice presentation. There are so many good things happening in planning and conservation. And unless you're on that committee, you don't have a full appreciation of the good work. So thank you both for the ongoing initiatives and planning and conservation and as I look around the room we have some department heads with us tonight when you talk about the budget process it continues to go well it's not easy but it continues to go well and it goes well because of people like Wendy and her staff Jeremy and Steffi Stephanie and Jessica and it goes well because of our department head leadership team and one of the reasons why we're coming in so effectively hitting the target this year is the good work of Rochelle Valeski at, and her staff at Rocky Knoll. Uh, that was one of the pleasant surprises in the process because they came well in under the target which provided some additional flexibility for the rest of the departments. I attended the Health Care Centers Committee meeting was that last week Monday? I shouldn't even try to give these dates because time eludes me so quickly, but uh, it was Rochelle's last health care centers committee, and I know I speak for the committee when I, when I say how much we have appreciated her thoughtful leadership and incredible track record during the last five years at Rocky Knoll. It's been superb, and we will dearly miss her, but we also are very fortunate that she gave ample notice and helped select our new Rocky Knoll Administrator. Would Kayla Clinton please stand and be recognized? Kayla, welcome aboard. So these two are currently working with about a three week overlap, which is just wonderful for Kayla. She has high credentials, but to be able to work with Rochelle and get a feel for the organization and have a seamless transition is just fantastic. So we thank you both. As I said, the budget process is going well. The Finance Committee now is doing the heavy lifting. The department heads have been meeting with the Finance Committee. And if you've hit the target and you've done your due diligence, which is the case throughout the organization, it's been going pretty smoothly, as those departments heads can attest to have already been there. I think I reported last month we were targeting a modest 1.35% levy increase and a tax rate reduction. 
I'm doing that from memory, so I think I'm pretty close there, Emmett, aren't I? I, I know you reported it for us, and I appreciate that. <laughs> we're still looking good, we're still on target. We have rescues coming in shortly, as well as the capital outlier requests, both which are a little beyond the goals we established, but because of some of the flexibility we have, as well as the work we've been doing to prioritize, we're gonna be just fine. We're gonna be just fine. The last thing I wanted to touch on is the transportation complex. As promised, I said each month I give a brief update. Elaine Bosman, my assistant, is here this night, filling in for Chris Lewinsky, who is on a much deserved vacation. Elaine, as you know, just coordinated our all-employee appreciation picnic, where we had, I think, a little over 400 people participate. It was very successful. And she keeps Tom and I in line, so we appreciate that. <laughs> that is a true statement. <laughs> the first slide. This is a shot of the transportation complex. I'm sure a number of you drive by from time to time, but I know all of you don't. And let me tell you, good progress, progress is being made under the oversight of folks like Greg Schnell and his team, and Jim Tabeast and his team, and uh, we're real pleased with the progress. We are still looking about four or five weeks late because of all the rain this summer, but I'm sure this good weather of late has, has been very helpful. But this is a shot from 67 and J, where you can see the rough work that was completed with bringing in the uh, water lines from Rocky Knoll. Next slide. We recently had the transportation committee out there. We did a little tour, and as you can see from this photo, the uh, the what I got to look at my the door canopies are all being installed right now. And one of the reasons for the door canopies, you know, why, why take that expense? Well, we've tried to be very sensitive to the neighbors. And there were some neighbors a little concerned about this massive building uh, going up down the road. And the canopies will keep lighting more directed down or in the parking lot area rather than just uh, shooting all over the place and being more disrupting to the neighbors. So I appreciate how Greg has worked with the, the neighborhood to make sure that their input's been heard and that we're sensitive to concerns like that. Next slide, please. Here's the office complex, which is far smaller than the overall garage and building and and where the work uh, is done on, the, on all the equipment. So as you can see, the office area is right in front, the roof has gone on, and so far it's looking good. Next slide. Here you can see from the business across the way, the main parking garage, which is obviously the main component of this facility. It is massive and uh, looking good. Next slide. There's the mugshot of most of the members of the Transportation Committee, Chairman Wagner and I, along with Jim DeBeast and Greg Schnell, we had a chance to uh, go through the facility and had just a great tour. And that day they were pouring the concrete in the main uh, garage. Next slide. And if memory serves, and I see Greg in the room, wasn't it 30 truckloads a day? Yes, 300 yards a day. Say again? 300 yards a day. 300 yards a day, how many trucks? 30. Right around 30, right? Unbelievable. Uh, as you can see, we're observing one of those truckloads coming in, and what a smooth operation, a little different than many of us may have seen happen with our house or our driveway where one truck, maybe two, and a few guys working at it. These guys, they were good, and they were effective. Next slide, please. And as you can see, that garage now is completed, and um, 30 truckloads a day they were moving so appreciate the work there next slide this is the repair shop and an angle from the mezzanine or storage area up above obviously that concrete has yet to be poured but uh, that's where a lot of the maintenance work will be done on the vehicles that are obviously stored in the garage next slide and then this is some in-floor heat so we have some in-floor heat going into this facility because it's more efficient next slide and then finally this is the vantage point from the driveway. So, so far so good. We are within budget. We haven't made great use of our contingency. Generally, you know, when you do a project, you build in five, six percent contingency. I think that was upwards of 1.8 million or thereabouts. I know we've had a few change orders, but overall uh, things are well within budget. And again, I want to say thank you to Greg Schnell and Jim Tabeast and the folks who have been closely involved with this. It's going well. With that, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. Okay, consideration of committee reports uh, from the executive committee. Resolution number nine regarding 2018 five-year capital plan committee recommendation to adopt. 
Supervisor Testruti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Testruti. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Question, uh, Supervisor Otten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in regard to the courthouse maintenance garage, I thought that that would be covered by the sale of that property. That's not correct. Could somebody answer that? Originally, we were hoping, or we had an estimate, that the courthouse maintenance gar garage would be closer to 250000 Jim Tabeast or Aaron Brault can both correct me if I share anything incorrectly here. After we got estimates, it came in higher than that. It's important. We want to get it done. So the reimbursement of two fifty five is from the sale proceeds of the parking area, which is ultimately going to be an apartment complex. But it didn't cover the entire cost of the new garage. I'm looking at Aaron and Jim. Anything to add there? Thank you, Thank you Supervisor Otten. Uh, Supervisor Rayner. Thank you, Chairman Rayner. Um, this is a, the capital plan is a big, a big expenditure for us at the county board, uh, $20 million over five years, $53 million before uh, reimbursements. Um, and I, as I look at it, I, I often have, have wondered, you know, are these needs or are they wants? And um, one of the pieces, the, the terminal building at the airport, um, I do have a number of um, friends and associates that, that are part of the airport environment and family. Um, and uh, what I've gathered over the years is uh, you really don't have a need for a fully staffed terminal at, at that airport. So I am going to make a motion to uh, to take the uh, terminal building development out of the capital plan. I assume that's in order, correct, Carl? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Is there a second to that motion? Yes. Uh, Supervisor, Mr. Chairman, I will second that motion. Thank you. Could you identify what line that you're looking at, please? Do you have a copy? Supervisor Hoffman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I speak to that particular yes, amendment you may. to this? Okay, yes, thank you. Yes, you may. Uh, I have thought about this long and hard for several years, and as you know, I don't feel that we need this building out at our airport. As you know, I am a flight instructor. I own a hangar at the airport. I've been flying out of the airport since the early 80s, and uh, it, you know, the airport is just what it is. If we build this building, we're not going to attract an airline, and we have good facilities the way it is, and I, you know, I don't understand why we're going to spend $1.2 million. I mean, there are several communities that have built ter terminal buildings, and they're literally empty and unused. I can mention Eau Claire. Oshkosh has very little use except during EAA, and uh, for us to put this in here, and until such time as somebody can show me that this is a good expense of the public taxpayer money, I'm opposing it. And I've been all over this country. I get into a lot of terminals. I do a lot of flying. Uh, you know, like just last weekend, I just took a run up to uh, Okano and back with the wife for a fly-in. So I do a lot of flying. And, I, and I've talked to a lot of the people out at the airport. And they agree with me. I mean, this is a senseless expense of the taxpayer's money. So I would, I, I'm supporting this, and I hope you do too, to take this money out of this particular capital plan. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Winkle. As a member of Airport Advisory, I didn't support this initially until I heard from the people at Polar Company, Walrath Company, Bemis, 
Lakeland College the need for a terminal. The other thing is that it will not be staffed by county personnel, it will most likely be staffed by our uh, FBO operator. So. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Anyone else? Maybe Adam, you could follow up on that because I know you've been involved in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to follow up on Supervisor Winkle's comments. I've heard the same. I think many of our larger businesses see this as a potential enhancement to our airport. And as everyone knows, the airport is the first impression people get in our community when they come across the state and the world and fly into that airport, and more of, it, and more of that is happening. So from my point of view, I appreciate the good work of the Transportation Committee, the Transportation Committee's Advisory Committee, Greg Schnell, Charles Sweet, a number of people have been involved in discussions. We recently had a consultant come in and give recommendations on costs and configurations. Final decisions have not been made, but I do know, as uh, Supervisor Winkle said, companies like Kohler and others are interested in not only the terminal being explored, but also uh, establishing customs here. Right now, anytime they go on an international flight, or Bemis does, or Johnsonville does, they have to fly in and out of Green Bay before they come directly to Sheboygan County. And that's an impediment to their business, and, it, and it's likely going to be an impediment to others. So it's not in 2018. It's considered for 2019. So obviously, if plans don't continue to develop or look favorable, this can still be removed. Or as the motion is on the floor, you could remove it now, too. But certainly, that gives some mixed messages, I think, to the Transportation Committee, Greg Schnell, Charles Sweet, and our advisory committee that are currently working on this. Thank you, Adam. Supervisor Winkle? The ability to bring customs here was one of the overriding issues with both the Kohler Company and the Walmart Company. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Okay, if there. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's been a while since I've been flying, but I've uh, flown for nearly 20 years and had a plane out to the airport also, and I'll respectfully disagree with Brian. I, I, I can't believe we haven't had a terminal thus far. When you go to a lot of the other airports that I went to, I couldn't believe how nice their terminals were and, and, um, and what we had here, and it was almost embarrassing sometimes. Um, Sheboygan's got a lot more traffic than some of the airports that Brian mentioned. Eau Claire is an example. Sheboygan's traffic going in and out is, is, is much, much higher. And same with Oshkosh, although Oshkosh is, the airport is doing quite well. So um, all I'll, I'll say is uh, we're not covering all this. A lot of this is state and federal money, and I think it would be a great investment for the county. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wegman. Supervisor Hoffman, did you, were you up again? Yes. Please. You're on. Uh, I don't think that we're going to have a full-time customs agent here for, you know, maybe one or two flights a day. That, that's just not in the, in the cards. Uh, you know, I, can you see it? I can't see it. That, it, that they're going to have a customs department here at Sheboygan Airport? I, I, I predict that that'll never happen. It's a good thought. And as for, you know, <coughs> Greg and I, I respect your opinion, but saying that it's a lot of this is federal dollars yeah but it's still taxpayer money and i still don't see the need i haven't been convinced so and i've been to a lot of airports recently and well anyway that's my opinion thank you thank you supervisor rayner the bottom line for all of us to look at is 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 this a need or is this a want and if it's a need for a smaller group of, of companies that might have uh, the opportunity to have customs, then, then what might the taxpayers I have represented have said, you know, why are we um, tapping the taxpayers in general for, um, for that? And uh, I think we as, as supervisors, we are, we are accountable to our the, the citizens. So I am, I am going to uh, vote to take Thank you. Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wagner. Um, the, the million dollars or the whatever allocation is being proposed for this, is this just the construction of it? And I wonder, are we going to be 
um, putting up money for operating expenses uh, for this uh, terminal, or is the private sector going to help with those costs? These are questions that I have about uh, about this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Bemis. I think as we look at wants and needs, it probably is not a need today or tomorrow, but in a year or two down the road, it could possibly be a, be a need. And I think with interest rates the way they are today, it's good to get a lot of our future needs taken care of now. I can remember when interest rates we were talking about 18%. Now we're talking what, two, three? Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Uh, Supervisor Wegeman. I should comment that the Finance Committee already discussed the um, possibility of getting the county's portion of this paid for by the private sector. And that was discussed at two different Finance Committee meetings. I think there's a very good possibility that if we go to some of the companies that uh, Supervisor Winkle mentioned earlier, um, we're, we're going to see some private funding for this um, to help us offset some of our costs. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Uh, Supervisor Conradi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. Things I know they sent out a questionnaire once, and there happens to be a lot of things were reported and came back to the airport commission. But one of the things was our our building, and um, that's also a reason why we're thinking about it and changing, which I've been thinking about for 10 years since I've been on that thing. The other thing is, is we we should be listening to what our employees in this area ask for and what they need, and that's why we did the engineering building out at the UW Chevrolet. You've got to listen to what they know, what they need. We don't know that. They use it and use it regularly. Uh, and I would believe, I, I, I hate to say this because it's not like I'm picking on you, but I bet you if 10% of you ever went out there and went into that building to see what it looks like, I'm sure that you pull in and out, but you would not like it either. And uh, we need somebody there to, put, to give a good impression of what our airport is because we do use it a lot and it's going to be used more and more in the future. Think about what's going to happen even if this big companies building in uh, Racine that all over this uh, state people are going to be trying to get business there and that's going to affect this our airport as well as everybody else's so I'm willing to thank you Supervisor Conradi uh, Supervisor Testrudi I would urge everyone to uh, leave this in the uh, capital plan for for the uh, 2020 it is we have more uh, activity in our Airport Advisory Committee. It had been dormant for about a year and a half. We we're getting a lot of input and uh, we're searching uh, what is the best location, what is the best way to do it, how to help finance it. At the last Airport Advisory, it was mentioned that uh, many of the corporates have been leaving the Manitowoc Airport, and I believe if I'm correct on this, there's one more that will be leaving this year and then there will be no more corporates out in Manitowoc County Airport at all. These are some of the things we, we need to consider. Uh, business is the lifeblood of our community and we need to support them. I would urge us to leave this in the plan for now and we'll dig deeper into the details and I'm positive the Transportation and Finance Committee will uh, look into it thoroughly and come up with the best plan going forward. And certainly, if there is not a need, I, I would, uh, I, I'm sure that it can be removed at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudy. Anyone else? If not, uh, then the motion is to remove, in essence, that amount for the terminal, which is lying, what, Carl? 287. Okay, so is, if I have it right. It, okay, yes vote removes it, a no vote keeps it in, correct? Okay, please vote. Motion is not approved. Four ayes to 21 nays. Thank you.
Supervisor Hoffman. Uh, before we vote on, on the motion, I have a question about why isn't there any money in the law area for expansion of our jail at this time or in the very, very near future? Because I think we had better start looking at that. I believe it's down there, but it is out further. Yeah, it's out too far, I think. That's fine. I think that's where the Finance Committee moved it to. Uh, Greg, you want to comment on that at all? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Finance Committee discussed this at length, and number one, um, we didn't think enough time and effort had been spent on investigating our various options, and 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 now we're we've gone back to the sheriff and and uh, um, and and asked for other alternatives um, that would not entail the kind of costs that were being discussed. So um, um, we we think. Uh, uh, there can be some better better alternatives than what were originally shown to us. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Uh, Supervisor Rayner. Uh, yes, the uh, the uh, sheriff department had asked for, I believe it was close to thirty million dollars uh, to build up the uh, the jail to add a stack up to the current mm -hmm. jail. Um, and apparently this has been a long range plan back at least 10 years. And there, there is currently concern that with our COVID epidemic uh, issue that uh, the jails will become overcrowded very soon in the next few years. And um, we may, you know, we, we, we've got to allocate our, our resources in this capital plan based upon where the needs are, and uh, it, it's, it is concerning at this point that that did get pushed uh, beyond the five-year plan. Um, the amount of money in here is simply for some kind of a study, I believe, but not for an actual uh, building. And. Um, just a quick comment. I can assure you $1.7 million isn't for a study. Uh, that's for the engineering and design of the 30, proposed $30 million addition. And I imagine most of the board feels similar on this. The last thing we want to do is spend $30 million on the addition to our detention center. The sheriff and inspector have clearly shown there's a need. And at one point, we were pretty much full. It subsided a little bit. But I thought the finance committee uh, was very clear that they want to see alternatives and not only alternatives to incarceration, but options to work with other surrounding counties that may have bed capacity. And I've already met with some of my peers talking about perhaps a regional facility. So I heard uh, Chairman Wagaman and the Finance Committee loud and clear, and I think it's a very appropriate challenge. We really need to look at all options before we uh, spend $30 million on an addition. But the $1.7 million in there for 222 is for actually the planning and design of that addition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Thank you, Adam. Okay, now we we do have a Supervisor Bemis. I would hope that we can have something figured out and taken care of before we have to go out and buy tents. <laughs> Agreed. Anybody else? Okay, we have a motion, I believe, before us to approve the five-year capital plan. And seeing no other lights, uh, please push your I button to approve it or your nay button not to. Motions approved, 23 ayes, two nays. Thank you. Uh, ordinance number four. Regarding changing the supervisory district boundaries to reflect annexations, committee recommendation to enact. Uh, Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to enact ordinance number four. Thank you. Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Damp. I will second that motion. Supervisor. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Any discussion? Seeing no lights, please push your aye or nay button. <coughs> that motion is approved unanimously. I'll turn the uh, gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 10 from the Finance Committee. Regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for 2018 county sales tax revenue sharing 
Resolution number 10 will be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 11 from the Law Committee. Regarding authorizing an application for fiscal year 2017 Justice Assistance Grant Program Award and entering into an MOU with the City of Sheboygan. Resolution number 11 is referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 12 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge and culvert construction in the towns of Herman, Holland, Lima, and Sheboygan Falls. Resolution number 12 will be referred to the Finance Committee. Uh, ordinance is introduced. Ordinance number five from the Law Committee. Regarding increasing medical examiner fees to match increasing costs. Ordinance number five is referred to the Finance Committee. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. Is there a second? Supervisor Bemis. All second. Motion second is to adjourn. Uh oh. And the clerk opens, please, ca please cast your vote. <laughs> Supervisor Damp. Hilblink. Supervisor Hilblink. Right. Supervisor Hilblink, could I get you to push your button? We stand adjourned.